Can you guys hear me now? Does that work? Did that do it? Can't think of what's going on. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! I got it working! I am a genius. I had to mute. I had to fix this. I had to mute my stream and then unmute my stream. So, starting my stream. Uh, there's an echo. Starting my stream while not muted apparently muted me. And then muting it and then unmuting it again fixed me. Anyway, welcome back for another stream. Um, and let's begin with uh, this week's buy round. Now, before we do that, the mid-season draft came in. Ori, I wanted to mention what he... Come on, come here. I've actually got my dog with me this week. Last week I didn't have him. Come on. Up you get. Up you get. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Tell, tell the people. Tell the, <laughs> tell the people what, what you want. What, what do you want to say, Ori? <laughs> The Richmond should have picked up Nathan Freeman over Matt Parker. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Yeah, Matt Parker's making you vomit. Wow. Okay. He's really, he's really not happy about the Matt Parker recruit. And I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, we have so, Richmond have so many small forwards. Why pick up Matt Parker? I like Matt Parker. I think he's a great player. I, I actually was very surprised that St. Kilda got rid of him. But um, he really didn't like that. I'm sorry, Aria. <laughs> But um, yeah, he didn't. He didn't like. Um, sorry, um, Matt Parker. He he's a good player, but I don't know. It's just weird. Richmond have so many small forwards. Like Dan Rioli didn't play. Lambert hasn't played. Stack hasn't played. I, I don't know. This is just it's just a weird recruit. But anyway, he's probably going to get a lot of game. He is a good player. He kicked sixteen goals from seventeen games in two thousand nineteen. I was surprised that Kilda got rid of him. So it's going to be interesting to see um, what he does. Now, selections have come out. Now, top 18 players score this week. Uh, so that's from your emergencies or on your field. And right now I'm taking a look. And if, uh, Hunter Clark was, was named in the side. So I'm just going to substitute him on the field. I mean, not that it makes much of a difference because I've got Stuart missing due to the injury. So I'll just take him off. Uh, I put Highmore on. I know that he wasn't selected to play, but I'll put him on. I'm, my back line's kind of screwed this week at the moment, but don't worry, I'm going to make some changes soon. Boke's not playing because of the buy round. I'm going to put Paddy Dowin, who was named in the extended lineup. Pal uh, is another player that's not playing, but I'll um, Collier Dawkins is. Uh, Tom Hickey was named, so he comes straight in for Matt Flynn. But uh, Brody Grunt is obviously injured, so I'm not going to keep him as vice captain. Don't worry. Uh, probably put Zorko as vice captain, actually. Uh, Zeeble's not playing. McCreary, I don't think he was actually named. I'm just going to do this because you never know. Late changes happen. Uh, and then there are going to be some trades. I just want to see, was McCreary... McCreary, McCreary, was he was he named in Collingwood's lineup? I don't think he was. No, he wasn't named. So that's that's kind of frustrating. I'm probably going to score at least one. I'm get, I'm definitely going to score at least one zero in my in my uh, forward line. But it looks like I'm and my back line's kind of screwed. But it's not because I'm going to make a trade this week. This is the tr week that I've been wanting to trade in. Um, I've been wanting to trade in Shannon Hearn from West Coast, and the West Coast are playing this week, so I'm not going to have a horrible, uh, horrifying weekend. I'm actually going to do okay. I'm going to keep Lockie Jones in the side. Uh, so remember, in a in a in a best case scenario or a regular season, I was actually th regular week. Stewart obviously comes in, Highmore's out, Lockie Jones plays right. Um, and then I have Cozzy at the bench. I was thinking of getting rid of Cozzy, but he plays every week. He plays every week. I mean, yeah, his scores aren't great. Like, that 29 is pretty ordinary, but let's be real. He plays every week, so why get rid of him? I'm not going to get rid of him just yet. Uh, Jiat, he's dropped in value significantly, and his, his scoring has not been great. So I'm thinking of getting rid of him, uh, and I'm also thinking of downgrading... Most likely a Flynn. Uh, f most likely Flynn, I'm thinking. And then probably Powell. Uh, I'm thinking of really doubling down on those sort of players. Um, cashing out right now. I know that Grundy's out. 
but he's only out for two to three weeks. He's not out long term, so I'm not going to get worried. I wonder if I can bring up the injury list on on the app. How can I bring up the injury list on the app? Is there a injury list? That was easy. So the injury list. How long is Grundy expect? I'm pretty sure it was like two weeks. It wasn't for wasn't a very long time. So Brody Grundy neck two to three weeks. So in reality, I'd rather keep him in the side. Uh, McCreary, he's available, but he just didn't get selected. So I'm hoping he comes back into the team as well. Um, Richmond, Damian Hardwick has turned around and said that they're going to be playing three talls for the rest of the year, most likely, which means that players like a young Coleman Jones is going to get more game time, but it also means that Chol will get more game time too. Plus, Nan Curvis is injured, so he's going to be out for over a month. Tom Lynch is still out for over a month. I'm thinking the Coleman Jones... Uh, to bring in, he's a ruck forward, dual position, 161,200, he's cheap, and the dual position makes him very valuable, um, it means that I can be, uh, and then, by the way, 112 points in his, what, second game in five years on Richmond's list, not bad, he's playing against Essendon, inexperienced ruckman, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, he's probably gonna have a, another very good game. West Coast, he'll probably struggle against, but that's in a couple of weeks anyway. I think that he's gonna go up, he's gonna shoot up in value. Um, he's probably gonna jump up 50k as soon as he plays that 30 game, but just remember that picking him is risky because he's he's not playing that third game yet. That third game isn't guaranteed and you don't want to be in another situation like Lockie Jones or Tom Highmore where it took him ages to play that third game. Yeah, it worked out in the long run for people that waited and held, but you don't want to be in that situation again if you can avoid it. I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to grab him, um, but I'm going to be honest with you, you probably shouldn't be doing what I'm doing, but I'm going to grab him um, because... I just think it's the right time to do so for my team specifically, but I am admitting that it is a big risk. So I'm going to get rid of Giat, but I haven't worked. I think it was Giat that I'm going to get rid of, Powell, and I'm also going to move on. I, I, I really wanted to. I really want to move on uh, Flynn, but my forward line is weak. It is not a good forward line. It is a very ordinary forward line, at the best of times, and that is a real issue. But by recruiting Coleman Jones as my ruckman, it means that I've suddenly got um, a dual position where I can swap between Tracy in my ruck forward and uh, Coleman Jones in my ruck forward, something that I haven't been able to do all season. So depending on what players play and what players don't, that could be a really useful asset to me as the season progresses when I don't have as many trades and I need to really rotate my team around in order to cover positions. Um, so that's what that's my goal for the end of this week is to really uh, get Tracy and uh, Common Jones as a as a good sort of um, swap between the two of them. I was thinking Zach Smith, and Zach Smith is probably look they're both the same price, Common Jones and Zach Smith. Zach Smith's definitely the the safer option, um, in the sense that he. He, he he obviously is a much more experienced player. He's played over 150 AFL games. We know that he's a good scorer. Hasn't been scoring great in his first two games this year, but he's at that third game threshold. He's not playing this week, but he's a one position Ruckman. I'm, I'm thinking the dual position is just, that's what's going to get me over the line because if, he, if Coleman Jones doesn't play and Tracy does because Tracy gets game, I can then swap and if I need that spare Ruckman. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of options. Uh, there's more options, I feel, with Coleman Jones than with Tracy. And Coleman Jones, he's going to be playing probably consistent football over the next month. Um, Hardwick's pretty much said that that's going to happen. And then we've also got the, the injuries that are piling up at Tigerland. So I think that it'll be fine. Um, so that's what I'm... They're the moves that I'm going to make. Uh, really bolster my... I'm thinking bolstering my midfield... And um, then also fixing that defense, but my my only my only concern is the fact that I don't my forward line is still shit. <laughs> it is still it is still shit house, um, and I don't know how, I don't think that I can fix that this week. I was thinking of possibly bringing in um, 
steals side bottom. So I'll show you side bottom stats. And they're not amazing like they have been in previous seasons. But side ass has actually been okay. Like he's a midfield forward, so he's got that dual position. Again, valuable. Um, he's scored okay. He's like he's regularly in the 90s. At least last four games, 92, 94, 96, 94. I mean, yeah, he's not tearing the, the AFL apart, but like they're pretty good scores. Like, if you're scoring 94, that's definitely more valuable than a than a, a Matt Crouch, or sorry, no, a Brad Crouch on his bad day where he scores 50, um, like I am currently stuck with, with Brad Crouch. So having someone like that who I know is just going to go out every week, you know, he's going to score his 94, 95, and I know that that's what he's going to score, is better than a player like a Brayshaw or a Crouch, who I have both of, who could score either 50 one week or 150 the next week. And that sucks when they both score 50 in the same week and it's a big game, which does happen. And that's frustrating. And if I can avoid that, that would be ideal. So I'd like to bring in side bottom, especially while he's down in price at the moment. I was thinking Heaney as well. Uh, Heaney has a lot of... Obviously, he's got his injury concerns. Just get Heaney. Where is he? So he's, um, he's a bit cheaper. He's definitely a bit cheaper at the moment. 398. He had a very good game against Carlton. He's played well against Collingwood. He's played okay against Fremantle. He's, he's starting to go up in price. I probably should have grabbed him last week when he was at 347. I still think there's value in Heaney though. Um, if you look, 150, like his first two games were great. His third game was a bit meh. Fourth game was shit. Fifth game was shit. Sixth game was shit. And then you get all those injury concerns, right? He's back. He's played three good games in a row. I wish that he was dual position. I really did do. Um, I think the only reason I'm swaying more towards side bottom is before his dual position. But then again, his price is just a, his price is just really good. So I'm thinking possibly bringing in Heaney. I haven't figured out who to get rid of in order to get Heaney. So that's that's the only concern that I have. Um, so anyway, Giat, he's going to go. I'm going to trade him. Then we're going to trade out... Oh, sorry. Let's let's do it one at a time. The app's not as good as what it, what it should be. Um, so we're going to trade out Flynn. That's the first player we're going to trade out. And we're going to get, uh, we'll say round 11. And Coleman Jones will be pretty close to the top. So we're going to get Coleman Jones, right? Complete trade. Confirm. And I've cashed in. I've made 200k. I'm pretty happy with that, right? Coleman Jones is also going to play this week while Brody Grundy is not. So I'm going to swap him out. And I actually have a player that's going to play this week on the field. Tom Hickey's been named as well. I have a full ruck playing this week. All three are likely going to play it. As, and as you can see, Tracy and Coleman Jones can swap if I need to later on in the year. If I need Coleman Jones to fill in for a, a forward position or if I need Tracy to fill in for a ruck position, I can I can do that. Um, and I think that's going to be very handy as the season progresses. Now, um, now I've got a bit of cash. I'm going to trade out Giat. And I'm going to go the Shannon Hearn option. Hearn, who scored 105. So he's gone down in value a lot this season. So I'm going to grab him. Still regretting not picking up Darcy Moore earlier in the year. Like I wanted. That was kind of my bad on that one. Um, I really should have taken my own advice on that and um, picked him up. But yeah, oh well. I, I screwed that up. I'm going to trade in. Shannon Hearn. I think Hearn's a good option down back. He's going to score consistently. We know he's going to score consistently. He's going to play this week. So we've done two trades already. I've got 185000 in the bank. And I think I can actually afford Heaney. <laughs> I could either go trade out Powell, who's not going to go down in value at all this week, or I can keep Powell. Um... He's going to keep playing. I'm thinking of getting rid of McKeary. 
am trading in Heaney. So I think I can afford Heaney too. What? An amazing trade. If this is this if this is works, which I oh, I'm three I'm two thousand seven hundred dollars short. No. Oh, I should have got Heaney last week. I'm $2,700 short. That is not even that much. That's not even that much. All right, let's let's cancel this one. All right, maybe maybe I can trade at Atu. Let me let me take a look. All right, Atu is slightly okay. So I'm just gonna trade at Atu. Uh, he's slightly more expensive, and that'll get me over the line. And now I'll be able to get Heaney. Boom. Complete trade. <laughs> Confirm. Done. I did it. I did it. I'm actually really happy with the trades this week. <laughs> Look at that. I'll oh, bring Heaney onto the field, obviously. That, that'd be stupid. Can you imagine leaving Heaney off the field <laughs> after bringing him in? So I actually have a full forward line playing this week. I have a full ruck playing this week. I have a full midfield playing this week and only one defender not playing. I actually think that's a really good result considering it. Oh, no, two defenders because I don't think Tom Highmore was actually selected in the team. I'm going to double check that, but I don't think Tom Highmore is going to be playing. Yeah, Tom Highmore was omitted. But Hunter Clark, only Hunter Clark came back. So there's a chance that Tom Highmore might be the um the medical sub again that'd be good that'd be handy if he was if he was the medical sub and then he actually got to play um but i don't like let's be real that's probably not going to happen so i'm still going to leave him on the starting lineup because if that did happen and i had him on my bench and didn't have him as emergency i'd i'd be kicking myself um lucky jones i mean there's not much i can really do there um i'm hoping patty dow plays uh, he he hasn't had the best season after everyone is expecting him to, um, but he actually got named for the side. So I'm hoping Paddy Dow actually gets to play. Um, he's actually lost me 8k, so I'm not not very happy about that. Um, Collier Dawkins will play. We're playing against Essendon. I'd, I'd expect Collier Dawkins to be in the 70s. Uh, Merritt's going to score big. Who is Melbourne playing against? Melbourne's playing against Brisbane, so picking up, picking Oliver again might be a bad choice. Zorka, I was about to say, who's, who's um, Brisbane playing? So that's the thing, both both players are scoring, uh, playing against each other, so I don't want to, don't really want to match them up just yet. Uh, Carlton, so West Coast, a lot of ins and outs. So did, um, so did the Bulldogs. I haven't really... Oh, Reese Conker's playing his 150th game. I haven't really decided who I'm going to put as my captain. I might just leave it as Clayton Oliver this week, honestly. Um, yeah, I might just leave it as Clayton Oliver. Who was Carlton playing against again? Carlton's playing against West Coast. Probably not going to go a Walsh. Uh, who was Sydney playing against... Sydney was playing against St Kilda. Uh, St Kilda are decent. Probably not going to pick Tom Hickey. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I go. I might just stick with um, who are the Bulldogs play. Bulldogs are playing. Bulldogs are playing Fremantle. Oh, Bulldogs are playing Fremantle. I might put. Bontempelli as my vice captain. Ah, uh, yeah. And I'll know that's on Sunday, so I'll know how Clayton Oliver plays by by the Friday. No, I did that the wrong way around. Hang on. Putting him as captain, him as vice captain. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to see how Clayton Oliver performs. If Clayton Oliver has a pretty good game, I'll leave him as captain and then I'll just make Lockie Jones my captain or something, who I know is not playing this week because of the bye, right? So there's no issue there. 
and um, so I'll, I'll, I'll use him as the cop-out. So we'll see how Clayton Oliver does on Friday night, and by the time, and you know, obviously... Oh, hang on, does it work if the round starts? Can I make him my captain? I don't actually know now. Oh, I don't know now. I don't know if that's going to work. I haven't, I've never tried it. So if my, if, if, if the, if the game, if Supercoach knows, if the Herald Sun knows that Lockie Jones isn't playing this week because of the bye, can I still make him my captain after the round commences? You know, I'm just out of, uh, because it's a risk and I don't want that risk to just not like to really hurt me. I'm going to put McCreary in, who hasn't been named. <laughs> and I'm going to leave Tracy uh, there as the emergency. Because Tracy's still going to score, even as the emergency, right? Um, Highmore is also there, who hasn't been named. So I've got a few players. Paddy Dow still might not play. So I've got a few players that I can put the captaincy on. So then I can, um, I can take Clayton Oliver's big score, if he scores big. And then I can, you know, um, take that score as like, um, what's the, what's that word called that we, oh, the, oh, what's that, what's that word called? I don't remember. Anyway, so but basically in order to get um, Clayton Oliver's big score, if he scores it, otherwise, if he scores an ordinary score against the Lions, I'm just going to leave Bont as the captain, as I think he's going to score a big one against Fremantle anyway. Uh, which probably means Brayshaw is going to be playing pretty shit. But I, at the moment, I think that's how my team's going to go. Uh, next week, I'm thinking of moving Powell on. Um, I love this triple trades. Moving Powell on and potentially recruiting another forward. I really want to get one more quality forward. Obviously, my team's not going to look like this on a regular basis. Like... <sighs> Like obviously, Stewart's going to be on the field instead of Highmore, which is going to really complete that back line almost. Um, Boak is going to be on the side, in the side, not Paddy Dow. That's why I need another. I need another midfielder as well, um, and that's why I'm going to trade out Powell. Um, I'll probably go for that um, steel side bottom next week. I don't think Collingwood are playing next week though. Let me look. I don't think they're playing next week. No, they are playing next week. They're not playing around 14. So yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the um I'm gonna go the steel side bottom, I think, next week. I think that's who I'm gonna go for. Uh, depending on his price, obviously, and depending on how players either go up or down in value this week as well. But this is what I'm sticking with. That's my captaincy, they're my trades. I'm pretty happy with bringing in Shannon Hearn. Probably should have gone to Darcy Moore a few weeks ago, like I thought. I actually thought Shannon Hearn was going to drop in value even more than what he already has. But now he's about to, to skyrocket back up in value, so it's too late. I have to take it now. Can't wait any longer because he scored 84 and 105. So that six score is, is exiting. It's leaving. So I think that he's just going to go up in value from this point forward. And he might still drop off in value if he doesn't score at least in the hundreds. But it's Shannon Hearn. He's probably going to most likely score in the hundreds. So I don't want to risk him going up in value any further. Um, and then me potentially missing out on him. So Because he, he's such a solid player to have in your defense. So that's that's uh, pretty much everything. Thanks guys for watching. Um, if you haven't already, if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe, like the video, give me um, your thoughts as well in the comments. And, and yeah, I'll be back same time, same place next week. Thank you.